What up, YouTube? It's me. It's Tom, otherwise known as Kyoto, big stinky bunghole man. Um, coming with a operator tutorial today on how to make sick wubs, dude. Basically, I was working on this new tune. I mean, I, I've been using an operator a whole lot since I switched to Ableton a couple years ago, and I really freaking like it. And I'm always kind of like finding another way to like make it work for what I need. Um, so here's a little clip of something I'm working on that um, I'm going to be putting out soon where I was using operator a lot. And I kind of like got a different sound than what I normally sort of end up with. And I'm going to go over how I made that sound roughly, give or take, an operator. So here's a little peep. It's going to be the bass sound, so at the drop, which is here. So that's like the gist of it. Um, the first drop of this tune, which is not this one, this is the second. First drop is kind of more juke, sort of like 155, like dun 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 dun, that kind of whole thing. Um, so this second drop, because I could just already see somebody in the comments gonna be like, that zip isn't that fast. I mean, like, yeah, it's like, I don't know, what do you shoot me? So uh, up here, I have, I saved the original patches from this. Uh, and I'm gonna go over those, and then I'm gonna go over these Ableton native ones uh, separately, where I basically tried to recreate them to the best of my ability. Uh, they don't sound exactly the same, but uh, yeah, the whole point of that is so then I can, there's just gonna be a link down below to uh, probably lead you to my gum road where you can uh, maybe purchase those. Or if you join my Facebook group or my Discord, uh, you could probably get a discount or get them for free. That's usually what I've been doing. But then yes, after I go over all of these things, I'm going to just kind of like, just open up Operator from scratch and then just like really go into what I'm talking about. So here is one of the bases. But uh, I think typically here, let me command click and drag here. So there's a few main parameters going on here. I'm gonna zoom in and when I do that, you might see two mice because uh, OBS is kind of weird with that. But anywho, I got two separate patches. I got uh, this one here is just a sine wave. Uh, this is just the base. Um, all that's happening here is uh, I have the attack decay and the sync linked up here. Um, so I've been using the sync a lot actually in this tune in this tune I'm actually really only using the sync I'm not really using MIDI at all to make the rhythm The only times I did use the MIDI is to re-trigger the envelopes of the sync because sometimes if I just sort of adjust the rate of this sync a bunch and I'll show you exactly what I mean uh, sometimes it doesn't uh, sort of restart where I think it will uh, so sometimes I'll use the menu to do that. But basically, uh, let's see if I can just turn off all these effects in here. There's uh, not too many. So this is what it sounds like with no effects. So really the bulk of it. So I got this uh, routing algorithm here. And I've been using, you know, a lot of the ones that aren't this uh, in Operator lately just because... Just because, you know, this is the default one and then you want to mess around a little bit, you know what I mean? But yeah, for this one, basically the idea here is A, I usually almost always leave A or the carrier signal as just like a sine wave. And then I'm modulating that sine wave with other waves. Um, uh, on B, which is uh, the green one here, I just sort of drew in a harmonic there. Let's see. So I like to draw in here a lot, and like a lot of people do this. I've seen Culprit do this, I've seen Frequent do this, and I know a lot of other people do this. I'm pretty sure Ablation does this. Once you start to mess around with drawing in here, you're really gonna like start hearing it everywhere. But I sort of stuck for something simple here, 
And then um, C is actually modulating B to give this one a little bit more texture. Honestly, you don't even necessarily need to waste a, an oscillator on doing something like that because you could probably get a similar vibe if you were to just maybe... So basically, um, and another thing, and I don't want to get too sidetracked here, but I just find this really interesting. I don't know how familiar with anybody watching is with the harmonic series, but basically that's what this whole course thing is. The harmonic series is just integers or multiplications of whatever the fundamental frequency that you're playing is. So uh, if you're playing an F, which is like 43.65 hertz, then a course one would just be exactly that. A course two would be twice that or that plus itself, otherwise known as an octave. Uh, course three would be, you know, just three of those, et cetera, et cetera. Course four would be two octaves. Course eight would be three octaves. Um, but what's interesting that I never really considered, and this might be uh, worth a different demonstration, is that um, basically if you're at course one and you draw in the second harmonic, that's a course two. And this would be a course three. This would be a course four. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the maths gets a little bit different. I think wherever you have this course, that's just saying what the very first harmonic is. Everything after that, I think would, if I'm correct, would just be, um, this would be then the third and the fourth and the fifth, unless uh, I'm not sure if there's some weird, uh, you know, relationship with, with this where, you know, this, if this is two, then maybe this would be the third. And then there's like a two and a half. I have no idea. Um, but uh, I haven't really thought that hard with my mortal brain about it. But yeah, I like drawing in here a lot. It's just something to consider. The whole, like, if you're at a course one and then you draw in over here, then this is just going to be however many courses above that. Um, the relationship does get a little bit different, um, you know, when you move up, I think. Because then I think that would kind of beg the question. So then, like, why would I ever use a different course uh, than that? So I think that the reason there is because... If I was just to look at this, actually, I'm not going to look at this in, in, in EQ8. I'm going to use um, Pro Q3. Um, basically, if I were to just look at this, uh, if I were to fill up this whole spectrum here with a course one. So this is why it's interesting. This is why, or at least part of the reason why you might want to use other courses. And now what's interesting is you'll see this like steep cutoff around here. And there's like some weird, like, I don't know if it's an artifact or if it's like folding or whatever you would call this, but you do get some stuff, uh, oopsie, you get some stuff that is above that. But it sounds kind of like an artifact of some kind. Uh, but what's interesting is you have this cutoff here, but then when you move the course up, Um, basically that little cutoff, that steep cutoff just kind of moves up and up and up and up. So this is interesting because then, uh, this kind of like gets into the, ter the, the territory of like, okay, well, what can I maybe use besides white noise to sort of brighten my bass up? Um, yeah. And like I said, if my theory holds, then if I'm at a course six here, then that just means that this first one is a course six. And then I don't know again, if that means that this is seven and this is eight. Uh, and so on and so forth, or if the relationship is then just very different because um, it does seem to move up a good amount. Not 100% sure, but either way, yeah, that's uh, what I really just like doing is just drawing in here until I get something that sounds cool. Then yeah, maybe modulating it with another like C here to give a little more texture. And then I have uh, this one here, D, uh, which is going directly out to A. Maybe I'll stick with these uh, original ones that I had. It was something like this. Um, so then one thing I've been doing a lot lately too is I've been messing around with the uh, LFO on things other than the pitch. So by default, if you're not familiar, I think by default the amount is set to 25. Let's just set it to 100% for the sake of example. And then I'm going to turn this off. By default, this LFO is actually on destinations A through D, which by default controls the pitch or the frequency. So in this case, that's goofy, although you could get really cool stuff with that too. I mean, I totally recommend messing with that for like vibrato or whatever. Um, this is definitely fun in itself. But you have this whole other thing of parameters here. Destination B, you can essentially use this LFO to modulate whatever the heck else you want. So um, in this case, I'm doing it on B and D. 
So what that's essentially doing is crossfade between B and D. So now what that means is that you're, it's basically when D is up, B is down. And when uh, B is down, D is up. I don't know if I said that the opposite way or whatever, but you get what I'm saying. It's, they have an inverse relationship. When one's up, the other one's down. Um, so you can really like get some interesting stuff out of that. So like, for example, if I made this like a course eight or something really dramatic, I'm actually not hearing that. Oh, because I got rid of the harmonic. That's why. So this, now if I turn this off, this is the whoop, whoop. That's what you're hearing there. And then B, which uh, you're essentially hearing uh, B and then the effects that C is having on B from its modulation. Um, but you're not hearing C on its own because we have this routing. Um, so if I turn off D, this is what you're hearing. Maybe I'll change this a little. Or maybe I'll change this one. So now when you have them both playing, they just flip back and forth between each other. So then what I've been doing a lot lately is I've just been... So what I basically did was on all these envelopes, I have them, the attack and the decay linked to macros as well as the sustain even though i don't think i really am and like using this although that that could be cool um but yeah the attack decay and the repeat that's the big one so now when i play around with this but we also have to consider um this lfo here so actually in the stock Ableton version of this sound with all the effects and stuff on it, I made a new macro, I think, a macro for the LFO sync because you really need to mess with both in order to get this, uh, what I'm talking about here. So basically, like if I have this at a sixth, yeah, or at a third, or let's go, uh, I'm going to do a sixteenth. That's probably, no, I'll do an eighth. So because the LFO sync is the same as uh, the envelope sync, uh, that essentially means that we're really only hearing one of the oscillators. We're either hearing only D or only B. But if we do it at half of whatever this sync is, then we will hear them every other eighth note. And then messing with the attack and decay. I mean, this is like some of the oldest tricks in the book. It's like ADSR. That's like, you know, what? that's like one of the first things that they teach you about in like sound design or synthesis or whatever. But I, I think it's just so overlooked. And like, it's such a fun thing to mess with if you're if you're choosing to mess with MIDI, uh, MIDI as your like songwriting approach, as opposed to like maybe dragging in audio or whatever. You know, I highly recommend messing around with both because they both are amazing in their own ways. But yeah, like if I pull down the attack... <laughs> Or pull up the attack. Or the decay. Or bring down the attack with longer decay. So that is the gist of it with like what I've been using Operator a lot for lately. Um, I already messed with this patch too much, so I don't even know what it would say. If I put the effects back on it because I've changed the patch so much, it probably won't sound right. So let's see. Nope, that's terrible. I hate that with all my heart. I'm going to turn this down. I'm going to turn this down. It's not the worst. Now, if you want to run down on the effects, um, basically, uh, I have two separate things. This is just the bass. And again, I have the attack decay and the sync linked up. Really, all that's happening here is that just the very start of the bass is going to be a little bit louder. And then there's a little bit of sustain. Um, the sustain is a little bit lower, just so that the beginning of the sound of that rate of that envelope for everything else sounds like it's got a little bit of an attack to it. Um, I've been using Spectre a lot. And now again, I'm currently looking at the third party version or the original version, I should say, of these patches. There, there will be the stock Ableton one included just below this. Uh, yeah, Spectre is like a, I don't know exactly what it is like by the book. I, I, I want to call it a multi-band saturator, but it's not quite because it's not exactly like it's a Fab Filter Saturn sort of a deal. It's almost like a dynamic EQ, uh, but it's it's a little bit different. Basically, whatever band you pull up, you can't bring down the bands. You can only bring them up. It's just going to like add saturation 
either to that specific area or from that specific area. Um, it's really interesting and it's really nice for brightening shit up. I got a little OTT on here, of course, just with the amount a little bit down. I've got this Pro-Q, um, where I'm basically sort of compressing these particular uh, frequency areas. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. And that's pretty much it, I think, for this one. Uh, let me check out the next one. So again, uh, these are a little bit boring. I didn't do the rates uh, as they were, or like the pitch uh, changes. Let me see here if I just do this. And same deal, uh, yeah, if you mess with the attack. Or if I bring up the amount on this. So here's another thing I'm talking about too. So um, if you really wanted a phrase to like repeat, you would have to have both the LFO, you'd have to be tweaking both the LFO and the LFO sync. Um, so in this case, Let's see. Oh, I need to be in this one. Actually. So let's see what our rates are. I'll have to actually just do that manually. I'm going to need to add this here again as well. LFO sync. I'm going to make it black. Whoops. Make this, or not black. I think I was using this color. And automate this as well. So let's see. So if I wanted this bit to maybe kind of be like, then I would need to, I think, make this LFO go the same speed. Exactly. Yeah, because then it's not going every other one. You're not hearing B up and uh, B up all these down and vice versa. Like when you go at the same rate, you're essentially doing it's like basically they happen together at that one moment. Um, and yeah, kind of same deal here. I've high passed the uh, mid high part of the bass, which I called harmonics. I don't know why mid high. Um, and then I added in this Pro-Q, I guess, was just to look at things. There's a tantrum, which is a phase distortion plugin. It's like 50 bucks. It's really freaking awesome. I guess I turned it off here. I think I can see why it's a little harsh. Um, another Spectre. Then we got this here. So actually sounds cool without it too, honestly. But I totally recommend messing around with this. Honestly, I kind of like uh, restraint. He's really sick. If you haven't heard of him, he's an amazing artist. He's got some like really next level sounds, um, but he really turned me on to like using Pro Q3 in a really experimental way. Um, yeah, I highly recommend. Maybe I'll just get a little sidetrack for a, a hot second. I highly recommend messing around with um, Pro Q three for stuff like this because you can get really formanty vowel-y kind of sounds it's like forget using a formant filter just mess around with like you know bell curves little dips and peaks uh in there and you're gonna get a really cool sound so here's a saw wave and now i'm gonna throw on a pro q3 and i'm just gonna make a couple of steep bells here And then you'll see, like, you'll see that I use this a lot. I just want to explain what that is before I move on. I'll probably end up making a separate video for this because of how often I use it. It's so cool because if you scroll, you can do this. And then if you just click, uh, highlight all of them and drag, you can invert them. And you can make really weird shapes with that in mind and do that. You know what I mean? So it's it's really nifty, super sick. I love using this. Restraint is a big boy. He has a big brain. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Yeah, and if I turn on the LFO, then you just immediately become different.
So that's not necessarily a sick webin operator. That was me getting sidetracked. But um, basically, the main things that I want to like really like just hammer in right now is drawing around in the wavetable um, in operator. Uh, so right now, here is the stock Ableton version of those other sounds. So there's this one. There's this one. There's this one. And there's this one. And now I basically just tried to take the same like order of the plugin, those third party plugins that I had, and then replace them with um, either, you know, an EQ8 for like Pro Q3. Or like I would use like in the instance of uh, Spectre, since I'm not exactly sure if I were to open the hood of Spectre, I don't know what like the routing or the signal chain would be of like what's happening there. So I basically just tried to like feel it out. It doesn't really sound quite the same, but basically, yeah, I here in these racks, I have this uh, FX on and off knob where basically you can see here all of these effects apart from, I guess, oh yeah, this I'll also link there. Oh no, it's not in the group. So now basically, yeah, if I turn this off, that's, then all you're hearing is operator. So yeah, the, the main points I wanna drive home are drawing around in the wavetable thing. Although in this instance, I didn't really, I was kind of looking for specific harmonics, oh, except for here, I was just kind of drawing around. And you can definitely hear that difference, especially if I bring this up a little maybe. Um, so drawing around on the wavetable, and then the other thing I really want to drive home is instead of like, you know, having a bunch of one shot MIDI notes and then you play with like the attack and decay or things like that, um, play around with the fricking sync, dude. It's so sick. Um, cause then you can just really tighten up the envelope and then you don't even have to draw that many MIDI notes. See the original reason why I did that in the first place. So I'm like, I'm going to start messing around with sync, not only because it's like easy and quick and fun, which is like, you know, huge plus uh, huge pluses, but, um, it's also, I was trying to like, try and avoid like the clicky sound that you kind of get from the retriggering and operator and the, the release and whatever. Um, to my knowledge, there's really no way to get like, to deal with that apart from like literally making manual fades or whatever. But I want to say, I wouldn't worry about it too much because, you know, you're going to have side chaining and you're going to have all these other things going on in the context of a tune. Like I, I wouldn't say that you hear it even here. Let's see. So yeah, it's just one of those things, like, don't be super autistic about it, you know, or I should maybe say OCD, you know what I mean? You know, like, sometimes it doesn't necessarily make sense to even solo something and listen to it by itself, especially if it's within the context of like a tune and you're not actually just doing a separate sound design session because if you're soloing something in the context of a tune then you're yes you're hearing it better but you're really not hearing it like in the context of everything else i'm not saying don't solo i'm just saying be aware of you know like you might it might sound good by itself but then with everything else you might be hearing less of what you want to hear or too much of something you don't want to hear so it's just something i would like play with uh you know in both ways um so I mean, uh, that's really it. Like, uh, I'm gonna save uh, this project file just with these racks here, um, and it's gonna be on my Gumroad. Uh, this tune will probably be out soon, and then yeah, I'm not gonna include these ones here just because they got so many third-party plugins, and it wouldn't really make sense because uh, you know it, you wouldn't be able to use them unless you had you know all. I'm not using that many crazy plugins, but either way, I'm not even gonna bother. Um, yeah, basically, uh, hit up my Discord. I'm going to link that. Uh, it might be on the screen right now if I'm not feeling lazy when I edit this. Hit up my Facebook group, which is currently called PP Gang, uh, which is definitely what I'm all about. 
And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to be doing more of these soon. Uh, and I apologize for the mic quality. I'm just staying at my dad's. I'm on my laptop. I don't got all my fancy things with me. Um, and yeah, hit me up for lessons, do whatever. I got a lot. Uh, I, I, I'm in a good place in life right now. I'm very grateful, very thankful and uh, made a bunch of life changes that I am hoping to stick with. And I appreciate y'all. And have a good rest of whatever day of the week it is. Doesn't matter what day. Just have a good one.